Tony Lockwood, sitting here in Cleveland, Ohio, at Case 18. Uh, it's co-hosted by Nathan and Digital Engineering, who am I representing? I'm here with uh, a special guest for you. Please introduce yourself and uh, tell us who you are, who you work for, and why do I care? <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. One, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so I'm Chris Wilkes. I'm president of Sigmetrics. We're a company that's been around for 25 years. We specialize in tolerance analysis software and the management of variation. And you're in McKinney, Texas. We're based in Dallas area, McKinney, yep. Texas. I yes. live in Carrollton. Okay. Yeah. Well, we were spun off out of Texas Instruments many years ago, so that's right. why we're based up in McKinney. Yeah, very good. By the star? Yes. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yes. Very good. That's for you cowboy fans. Okay. <clears throat> so I want to ask you, uh, you know, why don't you give me a, a, a quick overview of, of uh, your products. They're very well known, actually. They're very uh, important products. And uh, I'm sure as soon as you mentioned the name, oh, those guys. Well, a lot of people know us from the older days when it was uh, part of Texas Instruments. And at that point, our main product was called TI Talk. Then when we spun out of Texas Instruments in 99, uh, well, we couldn't keep TI Tall, so right, we yeah. renamed it for uh, CE Tall. Uh, and it, 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 it is uh, advanced uh, tolerance analysis. Uh, and that was product for the, the 25 year history. Over the last 10 years, what we've been doing is taking some of the core technology inside of CE Tall and building other products around that. So the mathematics that are inside of our software of understanding the surfaces and how they touch, how they work together, um, the interaction with the CAD model is something we've taken to other products. So CE Tall, very good at complicated systems, mechanisms, car engine, uh, you know, a Swiss watch, any number of, of, of ways that you could use it. But some people don't need that complex of a solution. They don't have that complex of a problem. Right. Right. So they need a simplified solution. So we took the core technology from CETOL and we applied it into a more simplified uh, uh, solution. So one-dimensional tolerance analysis. And that's easy tall. Easy tall is a right. product that we came yep. out with. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, we also took that technology and are aiding companies in understanding the use of GD&T. So, you know, if we know what the surface is, then it should be flat, then we could recognize that there's only certain call-outs that you can give a flat surface, right? So, um, yeah, you could give it a profile, you could give it parallelism to the other surface, but you can't give it circular runout. It's a flat surface. Right. So we guide a user through the correct application uh, or implementation of GD&T, and that's a product called GD&T Advisor. Good. Yes, sir. Now, uh, you know... What are the challenges your users are telling you that they are facing in this whole business? Uh, you know, because everything's happening so quickly. Yes. And uh, you know, it, it, what are they asking you for in terms of uh, you know, features to handle whatever the, their problems seem to be? Is there any? string that goes through? Well, th you know, there's a couple of trends that are, that are happening in, in the industry. They're happening to us, they're happening to everybody. And one of them is when you're faced with a 3% unemployment, getting access to new engineers to uh, or to, to, to skilled engineers is increasingly difficult for our customers. And since we typically are dealing with companies that are making some fairly advanced products, um, you know, what they're asking us for is to make the software easier to use. It's easier to get an answer without taking away any of the power of the software and the accuracy of the software. Mm -hmm. So we have focused a lot on ease of use, mm -hmm. right? How can we, you can't just click once and you get an answer, right. but how can we structure the software that is a more intuitive workflow? Mm -hmm. And so it's not a you know, engineering tool by engineers for engineers, right? Right. right yeah. It's a software tool to help you get to an answer. Right. The process in and of itself isn't what we want to have. Mm -hmm. It's the result of that and how we use that data downstream. And that's the other trend of that we're seeing a lot, is the continual use of the information that we're creating. Mm -hmm. So if we have something that puts together, well, here's the tolerances. Okay, well, great, but 
where is that information stored and how do I get it all the way down into my inspection systems, my CML machine at the end to know that, okay, well that tolerance is within the range of the design guy when he put the design work together a year and a half earlier. Right. And so it's the entire process of that data uh, and that's what we work a lot with the CAD vendors, mm -hmm. PTC and Deso and, and SolidWorks in order to make sure we have uh, the good downstream use of the information. Yeah, so, you know, the reuse there of the data and the data stream, that, and those are uh, great issues. You're addressing the complexity and then also it seems you're addressing the um, the buzzword these days is a democratizing the software so that more engineers can use it and stuff like that. Are you, are you, you are getting, you, you touch upon the companies are asking you really to do that, to hide the wizard behind the curtain and give them the interface to make the software do everything it always did and will do, uh, but easier. Now, does that go down, how far down does that go in, in the, uh, the stream of the companies that you're talking to? Uh, well, some of it can go pretty far, mm -hmm. I mean, right? So, so the very early stages, uh, a, a, a person may be just, just doing an initial design. Mm -hmm. Not a big deal. But most initial designs are still taking some work that was done from something else. It's an iterative process, mm -hmm. right? I'm going to take this microphone and I'm going to do a little bit different design of it. I'm still grabbing a lot of the components that were in there, a lot of the measurements. Mm -hmm. So how do we take the data that was in there at some point in time, even if it was manually put in, and use that in my new design? So that's one step, mm -hmm. okay? And I don't have to, want to have to redo, all, you know, where you put all the new information in there. But maybe my manufacturing process has changed. Maybe I'm using a different material. Maybe I can't hold a specific tolerance, so I need to update as we go, okay? Mm -hmm. But then I want to take that information and I want to move it all the way through. So it's more of a PLM on the data management, which is why our software integrates directly into a CAD system so that we are storing the information inside of the CAD data model. We're using the APIs inside of that. Right, and you're, you're very tight with the uh, PTC. Very tight with Creo. with Creo, absolutely. Um, in fact, the gd &T Advisor product uh, that we created several years ago is is what they have uh, embedded in the in, in, in Creo 4 uh, and, and future versions. We're very tightly integrated with SolidWorks. We're a SolidWorks Gold partner and have been for quite a few years. Uh, and, and, and that's really been driven by the users of wanting to see that tight collaboration between. The last thing they want to be doing is typing data twice. If you do a tolerance analysis of the spreadsheet, you know, you're doing all this data entry. That's right. where you're going to get errors. Right. Assuming you get the formulas right, you're just going to key enter wrong, right. right? So instead, we take all of the information from the CAD model, but we actually write it right back to the CAD model. So if you update you know, you want to go from 0.1 to, you know, 0.2 on your tolerance value for some measurement, it'll write back into the CAD system. Right, so you still have it. So you have the associativity back and forth. Right, yeah. It takes a lot of work, it takes a lot of programming to do that for each yeah. different CAD system, right? But we do it with Katia, we do it with SolidWorks, we do it with Creo, um, we, we support NX, uh, we, through EasyTall, support uh, Inventor. Mm -hmm. um, so every major CAD system out there, we have a version that they can use to a varying degree of integration. Right. We're not as integrated in an NX world as we are in a SolidWorks world. world or a Creo world. Yeah, right. or a Creo yeah. world, yeah. yeah. Uh, now, do you have some sort of a university program or just education training for your users uh, at both? Well, you know, we, we, we do a lot with the universities for uh, the gd &T product. Mm -hmm. So gd &T is something that's taught at the university level. We have a university program for our easy tall. Um, for, the, for the more complex product, we typically find that that isn't taught as much at the university. Mm -hmm. like when, a, when a university level is doing much more from a, a design, and they might work with materials, and they might work with uh, coming up essentially with prototypes, right. but they're not into multiple production. Right. So they don't really teach design for manufacturing as much, this is more of a post-university right. or a graduate level. And we have university programs, college professors that use our software and teaching.
Uh, now, yeah, with all the uh, stuff going on with the computer hardware, uh, you know, HPC and all that jazz, has that had a, a, a good effect on you guys? Is that uh, is something... The more firepower you can throw at these problems, the better it is. For yeah. us, we're not that uh, computational intensive. You know, you could do a, a tolerance analysis using like a Monte Carlo method, mm -hmm. right? Which is just going to be randomization. Right. But you're going to have to run that 30,000 times right? um, to get a reasonable answer. And, and you might go up higher than that. And then you make a change and you rerun it. Now, that's a, that's a, a, a solution that's going to need more power. Right. Ours is direct mathematical solver. So you pretty much hit a button, and you, it really a few seconds later you've got an analysis for, you know, even a more complex problem. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're doing a tolerance analysis study on an entire engine, yeah, it might take a little while to run it. Right. But uh, it'll certainly be done by the time you get back from lunch. See? So <laughs> yeah. the, the the additional computing power is helpful. For us, it's really about. Um, the, the more powerful graphics card and being able to display the CAD, right. we're still interacting directly for, with a, a CAD through the mathematics. Mm -hmm. okay. Very good. Now, um, I want to make sure that people know how to get in touch with you. Your website is? So they can certainly go to Symmetrics.com. Frankly, they can Google CE Tall and yeah, hit it and... Is. You know, I'm. Uh, uh, you know, we've got LinkedIn pages and all of that. So all the normal methods to go after the information. And you know, I can say that one of the things you had asked about was the democratization, and yeah. we are an active participant in the Assess Initiative in oh, trying yeah. to increase oh, the democratization of tools like this as we work more and more to integrate tools. What what engineers don't need and managers don't want is to have standalone tools. They want the tools talking to each other and exchanging the information they back don't and forth. care how it's done as long as it's done well. That's right. Done correctly. So the Assess Initiative is one of the, the one of the ways that, that we're trying to drive democratization and, and we think that's an important uh, part of the process. And it's absolutely an important part of the process in my opinion. All right, I'm going to have uh, this website so that you can uh, go check out some metrics some more. Uh, you can just contact the digital engineering editors. And I'll have a list. I'll send it to you, probably with a bad joke or two. Chris, thanks a lot for your time. Thank you That's very much. All, Thank you.